So, in the early 2000s, shortly after the world exploded from Y2K, there was an emerging genre that had somehow managed to completely dominate the Western world, of music anyway. That genre was new metal. It's been a genre that has divided metal fans globally, as on one end of the spectrum, you had bands such as System of a Down that were a politically driven group and spoke of things like war, genocide, and other controversial topics. And then you had Limp Biscuit, who just did it all for the nookie and really didn't take themselves too seriously. I think it's safe to say that new metal was in full swing by the time albums such as Chocolate Starfish, Follow the Leader, and Toxicity had been unleashed on the youth of America. However, new metal was seriously short-lived, and it kind of died out in 2004, 2005, around that period. And we started to see a dramatic shift in the overall sentiment of alternative music. New metal was aggressive, dark, and could come across in a very disturbing way to the everyday Joe. But then came along a lighter version of alternative rock, I guess you could call it, that was still appealing to the discontented teens of the day, but had a much poppier edge to it, almost pop punk in a sense. In 2002, a band called Taking Back Sunday released their debut record, Tell All Your Friends. This record is considered by many to be the first big record that represented a new genre that would be known as emo. And whilst you could argue that Jimmy Eat World's 2001 record, Bleed American, may have started the trend, singer Jim Adkins didn't quite have the same allure as Adam Lazara from Taking Back Sunday, who showed somewhat of a more sensitive side on stage. We could also obviously discuss the real emo catalyst record, which was Full Collapse by Thursday, but that's another story altogether. A variety of emo artists then started to rise up through the ranks, such as Fall Out Boy, Panic at the Disco, and Paramore, amongst many others, of course. And I guess we can't leave out My Chemical Romance. We don't want anyone to cry. Paramore's second record, Riot, was huge, and it peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 charts in 2007. Singles taken from the record, Misery Business, Crush, Crush Crush, and That's What You Get were big hits, and you couldn't go to an alternative nightclub and not hear them, or at least I couldn't anyway. And I was quite a big fan of a lot of these bands and a lot of these songs. And believe it or not, back in the day when I was a little bit younger and used to wear eyeliner and had slightly different hair, people used to sing to me, what's the worst that I could say? You know you look like Gerard Way. And thankfully, I don't look like him anymore. I hope. We'll find out in the comments section, I guess, won't we? The rise of these bands caused an enormous rift between metal fans and alternative metal fans, which is no surprise as Paramore were essentially a pop rock band, as were many of the other emo artists. However, some of the emo fans would still say that some of the emo music was metal, but that's not the main point here. The point here is that despite how much you might have hated these bands, they wrote some really, really good music, super catchy, upbeat, and very memorable. Which brings me to the point of this episode. This Is Why is the new album from Paramore, and to my surprise, I think it's actually quite incredible, and I didn't think I'd ever say that about a Paramore record, especially the regular viewers of the channel, which you've probably been watching the documentaries, will know that I am quite a big metalhead. Uh, I love Thrash, my favourite band is Motorhead, and I'm pretty big on Megadeth, Anthrax, and a bunch of other obscure Thrash bands as well. So I'll be the first to say that I'm very shocked that I kind of like the new Paramore record, but it's important to keep your mind open. Overall, it is an incredible album, so I have to say kudos to them for their writing abilities. It has elements of rock, funk, and dare I say it, even a little bit of disco in parts. Very reminiscent of some early Incubus in many ways, not the heavier stuff. And it also has hints of Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. All bands which I'm pretty fond of, so maybe that's why I'm digging this Paramore album. Uh, I had no intention of paying any attention to this album, 
However, I saw the title single from the album pop up on my YouTube watch page and gave it a spin and then played it on repeat for about two days solid, which is what I tend to do with new music that I like. I'll put it on a loop and I just won't stop listening to it. And not to mention the singer Hayley Williams does quite frankly have an incredible voice and it doesn't matter what genre you like, you really can't deny that. So I'm thoroughly recommending you to check out this record. It really shouldn't matter what style of music you're into. A good album is simply a good album and this one is. Now, if you're a regular viewer to the channel, you're probably used to watching the documentaries. Don't worry, they will continue as normal. This is just my new show called The Verdict, which is an opportunity for me to share more of my personal opinions on music, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Raw Music TV. Music